What's up guys, Gibbs here, and welcome back to Pro Cycling 2021 for episode number 8 of the Intermarché Career Mode. Very, very crucial episode today, uh, because not only are we going to start the Giro d'Italia, our first Grand Tour, we're also going to take a look at the dossiers for the season. Now, uh, I've had asked you guys in the comments to give me a few names. Um, I took all of your suggestions and I added mine. Let's take a look at the shortlist immediately. So what I did was quite simple. Um, I went and took a look at what the sponsors wanted. Um, and they said France, Italy, Netherlands, and Belgium. So that's my main focus. Uh, out of the nations that are as well in the shortlist that uh, weren't sponsors, we've got Germany through Leni Kemna, we've got Rafa Maika and Poland, we've got Attila Valta and Hungary, uh, and I think that is it. Yep. So we're going to try and keep a very um, realistic uh, kind of signings. Now what do I need? Obviously I need at least one climber or GC leader. If possible, let's go for two. Uh, I need also a sprinter. Uh, I've had enough of Alexander Christophe. Although I say that he has contributed to 1,200 points out of the world rankings. But first, before taking a look at our new signings or potential new signings, let's take a look at who we may want to resign because we've got a lot of riders uh, out of a contract this year, uh, up to 11 riders, if my maths are correct. Actually, that would be 10. Uh, starting with Alexander Christophe, we've got Baptiste Plancard, Dimitri Kleis, Bonnie von Poppel, Andrea Pasqualon. I really liked him, but he's, two, he's 34. Luke Vliegen, Jan Heert, who's got 16 to 30. I'm not sure if it's worth uh, carrying on with Jan Heert, although I really like him. Tom De Vrind, Simone Petit, and Quentin Ammons. Obviously, we're going to go for Quentin Ammons because he's still quite young. Uh, and runner-up of, um, of Liège, we have to go for him. Um, I would go for Luke Vliegen, but he already has 100% interest, so there's no need. Out of the riders that I could potentially go for, we'd have Christophe, Pasqualon, and Jan Heer. Quinton Ammons is the only rider I should really try to re-sign. Pasqualon, potentially later on, out of the riders without 100% interest, um, because we'll go for Luke Vliegen eventually, we'll go for Petit, uh, and we'll, we'll keep like the Belgian core. So, climber-wise, We've got Kemna, uh, sadly 0 to 15, so we won't say yes to him. Uh, then I've added Brandon McNulty, I know someone mentioned uh, Americans earlier on. Um, the thing is, if I go for like a mountain leader, the only one that fits the sponsor regions is Clément Champoussin. Um, what I would like to do is like having a quite a young team. Um, therefore, I feel like Rafa Maika is not going to make the cut. I feel like Rafal is going to be a no. Same for Kemna. Um, I like the sides of Attila Valta. I feel like he could potentially replace, uh, replace sorry, Jan Hert on a purely numeric basis. So I reckon Attila or someone like Ham van Luka could be the one. Um, then maybe get like a Maxim van Gils to try uh, and really strengthen the, 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 the mountain side of, of the team uh, because we don't really have that kind of riders. We also thoroughly need a time trialist, which is why I will be looking to probably get Timon Arensman and or Thibaut Gernalek. Um, I think that could be quite some nice signings. On the couple aspects, Gianni Vermeer is my main prospect, although I don't feel like I'll have the budget to get him if I manage to get all the previous signings and the riders from before, and the riders aforementioned, are by far my priorities in this transfer window. But if we do get Vermeer, it's quite nice. Sprint-wise, uh, I'm looking to get at least two riders. Uh, Neil Sekov is someone I would really, really like to sign. Um, I know Jasper Philipson is on the list, but it's probably going to be a, a, like, a, a, like a dead shot. But we may try to go for Sasha Vemas uh, or either of Kisbol and David Decker, although I'd like to go for a Belgian. So maybe someone like Arne Marit to try and keep the, uh, the youth side of this team. Now, a good thing for us, uh, out of the riders I have in my shortlist, uh, Van Hooke, De Wulf, and uh, Sasha Vemaes both have 100% interest to join me, so I don't have to get them in my uh, in my scouts, which is good, which is good. All right, so we've got Quentin Ammons, Clément Champoussin, Timon Arensman, and Jasper Philipsen. I think so far that's not too bad. Uh, later on, we'll be trying to get Gany Vermeersch, um, and potentially like another time trialist like Brandon McNulty, could, like could be a, a very very solid shout. Um, but yeah, you've seen some of the riders available in uh, in the, 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 the transfers. 
If you guys have any suggestions, yet again, I am willing to uh, take them into consideration. And maybe, who knows, your rider will be announced next year. And our Giro campaign begins today in Budapest, Hungary, with a 9km prologue. Kasper Pedersen is currently leading uh, the winner of a race earlier this year. I'm not sure which one, but he did win once, uh, I remember that vividly. Uh, not exactly sure of the rhythm I should probably use it with Domenico. Uh, we're going to rock a solid seven, uh, solid 88. Uh, Zian Polans takes the lead, the wrong Slovenian for UAE. Uh, is, is there... Okay, there's no Pogacar and there's no... Now, for fuck's sake, there's a Roglic. Ah. Well, that, that, that was a fun, fun race. Uh, I enjoyed it. Across the line for Domenico. And it's going to be provisional E3. Not bad. And the first Giro of Italia is not Filippo Ganna. It's Stefan Kung, 17 seconds on Ghana and 31 seconds on Podzovo, who comes up in P25. Stage 2 and the proper first road stage of this Giro. Time to take a closer look, maybe at the start list if you guys hadn't seen it. Uh, but our sprinter is going to be Andrea Pasqualen. Um, I reckon if I can get it like one stage win, like one mass sprint stage win with him, I could classify that as a successful Grand Tour for, for Pasqualen. The uh, objectives, obviously, of, uh, of the team are elsewhere. Uh, they rely with Porzo Vivo, uh, with Lorenzo Rota, but mainly with Taco van der Rohn. We've entered the final 10 kilometers of this um, stage of the Giro that ends in Gyur. Uh, there is a remarkable amount of wind uh, and it's really disrupted my train. Uh, thankfully for the sprint aspect, Pasqualon has managed to come back on Lorenzo Rota. Um, but the Giro for the GC aspect is a bit further down, um, but hopefully he'll be able to, uh, to come back and make the wheels of Taco as we're going to use the gel. 5k to go. Van der Hoorn, Emé de Rent, Lorenzo Rota, Pasqualon, the train can most likely and will most likely change throughout the Giro. Uh, I'm going to count a lot on uh, race day conditions and the daily fitness of my riders. Um, but Pasqualon will always, always be our number one sprinter. Is Avendrame in my wheel? It is indeed Andre Avendrame. There goes Lorenzo Rota. That's really early. That is really, 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 really early. We're going to try and launch Pasqualon. Uh, oh, God. Ha! Huh. I see. Well, uh, so, so that's our first mass sprint. <laughs> Vamos. It's probably going to be quite tough to replicate yesterday's win with Andrea Pasqualon, uh, given that we have a minus three today with uh, the Italian. Uh, no special bike either. That's a shame. I, I really thought we could have special bikes here. I can't lie. Um, but yeah, you know what? We've already got one win on the mass sprint. Today's the final day in Hungary. So we'll just probably try to just to survive. And we've entered the final 10 kilometers of uh, well, the Hungary parkour of this Giro d'Italia. Uh, 10k until we reach the, stri the, the, the streets of Nagykanisna. No, that's, I've added an N here. Nagykanisna. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. Uh, if there's any Hungarian watching, I, I'm truly sorry for murdering this uh, precious town. Never heard of it, I can't lie. Um, but once again, sorry, once again, we're going to sprint for Andra Pascolon. Minus three is going to be quite problematic, uh, not to say very much an issue, but we'll try and vibe either way. I've launched way too early with Gerg Zimmerman, if I'm being honest there. Um, that's going to hinder my chances even more than they already were. Nice! Zimmerman blocking Pozzo Vivo! Brilliant! And we even like managed to get a, a saboteur on, on the same team. That, that, now, if that's not talent, then I don't know what it is. Uh, but we're going to go right now with Emi de Rent, Viviani, Philipson. They're all looking to defeat me. And it's going to be Jasper Philipson who takes the dub ahead of Emi de Rent. It's a 1 2 for Belgium. What the fuck is up with this sprinting field here? It's P3 for a minus 3 Pasqualon. Well, if this doesn't look like a potential win for Intermarché Gobert, we do have a bit of a hill uh, towards Agrigento, I think. five. I mean, 5.4 on average. 3.6 kilometer of length, and although it's a plus one on Pasqualon, it's a plus four on Taco van der Horn, it's a plus five on Domenico Pedrovivo, and it's a plus three on Lorenzo Rotta. Right, 
We've got one win and one podium so far. It's time to make it two wins. I can't lie, I'm in a bit of a, of a situation here. Because, as you've seen on, uh, on the previous episode, if you've, if you've seen it, I usually struggle on hills that are quite short, especially like five kilometer or less. Because I never really know what to do on them. Now it's not as steep as a mur de vie, for sure, I'll, I'll give you that. But I'm, I'm still quite unsure on, as to how I'm meant to manage this. So I'll put like a preemptive 90 on both Lorenz Hus and Georg Zimmermann. Probably pace from this point onwards. I have, I'm telling you, I have no idea. Uh, should I, sw I should swap Lorenzo and, and Domenico here. Hold up. Let me swap them to round. All right, good. Zimmerman and Petit are going to go until they can't give anything left out of their body. Although I reckon that may just kill them quicker. Onshore. Again. Bit of, a, bit of an odd one here. Oh, Petit has managed to not block anyone. Oh, that's a first. Congratulations. Uh, hold up. 99 on both. Taco. Oh, wait, wait. We got blocked. We got blocked. We, we got big times blocked here. We got massively blocked. That's a big L. That's a big L, but I don't care, because it's a big dub for Lorenzo Rota. No, no, shut up, Tish Benut, I swear to God. <sighs> Grazie mille. Lorenzo Rota gives us a second win on the Giro d'Italia. First mountain stage. We're heading to, uh, well, a place you can't really go to right now, uh, because it's the Etna. And just like Intermarché once you go there, uh, this bitch on fire. <laughs> Uh, sorry to everyone that lives in Sicily and has currently been forced to move because of the Etna going into flames. Uh, I apologize for this joke, which was potentially too soon for your, uh, for your taste. Uh, but hopefully, Pozzo Vivo will bring enough heat to counteract the heat of the Etna. It's not how physics works, but it's how PCM works. And it looks like the peloton is going to let the breakaway go, because I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going 41 right now and they can't catch me. And as soon as I go 80, I drop them. So, yeah, most likely a breakaway win today. Let's take a look at who's up front. We've got Baron Chini, Anthony Perez, Martin Suzvelt, Eduardo Zambanini, and Mauro Schmidt. One rider got dropped early on, and that would be Owen Dole. And we started the ascension of the uh, most active volcano in Europe. Um, UA is still pacing at the front, I'm going to guess, for uh, the likes of Joel Medan by pacing. I do mean just being there uh, and showing the jersey of UAE rather than actually pacing, because the gap has... Yet again, gone, uh, gone up. I'd reduce the rhythm by going 99 with Taco Van Eron, as you can see with the lack of energy he's got. Uh, but yeah, they, 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 don't, they don't care about this. They, they, they don't give a shit. Petit's at the back. Not a big fan of that. Uh, who's meant to protect Pozo Vivo? That would be Georg Zimmerman. Not exactly at the back, but it could be worse. Pink is gone. Joe Almeida has let... Wait, Joe Almeida doesn't think? Wait, when has that happened? Oh, was it yesterday's stage? It was. It was yesterday's stage. Fair enough. Did not know that. Uh, 3.30 for Martin Tuzveld on his own. Can the uh, Dutchman hold on for 6 kilometers on the slopes of uh, Vietnam Piano Provenzana? I, I, I don't know, actually. It was more than a, of a rhetorical question. 3 kilometers. The rhythm has increased drastically. Martin Tuzveld has not. And he's going to get co-op by uh, first Miguel Lopez, then Joe Almeida. They've got a 30 second lead over the peloton, led by Primoz Roglic. Domenico is going to get blocked here quite a, quite a bit, actually. Not a big fan of that. I'm trying to end comeback. No, fucking Lenny Kemna, man. I know you've got zero interest of joining my team, but right now I have zero interest of, like, keeping you in this race. The win up front is going to be for the Malia Rosa. Joe Almeida takes the win. Nope, he doesn't have jinxed him. Ha, got him. <laughs> it's when Primoz Lopez ahead of Joe Almeida. David Godu is going to take P3, big ups. Wait, Roglic? Oh god. Primo Roglic has had a stinker. Godu takes P3. Ben O'Connell, Dominico Pozzo Vivo, Lorenzo Fortunato, Hugh Carthy, Steven Krovek, and the biggest loser of the day with a minute and 15 seconds lost on Miguel Lopez is Primo Roglic. Alright, it's a hilly stage. However, it does look like it's going to be a sprint. So, where is he? There. It's a, it's a mission for Andrea Pasqualon. Also, GC-wise, I haven't shown it, but we are currently in P3, behind the untouchable Joel Meda and Miguel Robles. Uh, and then, I mean, on, honestly, look, I came on this Giro pause uh, without any, like, 
ambitions GC wise. I just genuinely I wanted to stay joined. We've already got two of them. So I, I don't know. If I can hold on with Dominico, is that a fitness peak since like the Tour de Romandie? So I suggest, or I, um, I suppose, I suspect, I suspect that the last week will be quite tough for Dominico. If he can hold on this fitness, honestly, a top five would be quite nice, I think. And maybe try to, yeah, yeah. you know what, win the point classification with Pasqualon. I'm not going to lie, the rhythm in the breakaway has been a bit of a mad one. Uh, and the gap is barely three minutes. So I'm quite surprised by it. Uh, but it's Juan Manuel Diaz and Tanel Kangas. They just dropped me for vibes, I suppose. Uh, we'll see if we can come back. I've realized something. Most of the stages on this tour are quite short, like 138, 144, 135. But as I say that, the next stage may be 223 km like kilometers. I, I don't know. Sit rep with 14 kilometers left on uh, the uh, sixth stage of this Giro d'Italia. We have our train ready for the sprint in case we catch the breakaway because the breakaway is still one minute ahead. Oh, Fortunato just crashed. P13 of the GC crashed with Esteban Chavez, the mainly P4 yesterday. He was in good shape. Fortunato, not anymore. Uh, I guess some he, he doesn't have good for, Fortunato. That, 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 that's not funny. Uh, please forget that attempt as a joke. Um, but yeah, 10k to go in this stage. Still, the breakaway short of a minute. Unsure if I should pace more. I reckon I probably should. I'm not the fastest, but I've got the best acceleration of the group. So we 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 shall see. I think this situation is extremely likely in in case like if it's breakaway, I'll lose because I'm going to focus on the peloton. And if it's the peloton that wins, I'll lose because I'll focus too much on Lorenzus. See what I mean? There's an attack ahead. Lorenzus has not followed. So we fuck it. We no, we don't do that, but we move <laughs> and we're gonna forget about Lorenzus's chance of uh, being a Grand Tour stage winner. And we're gonna go for the one time stage winner, Andrea Pasqualon. There goes Taco van der Horn. Lorenzus is gonna stop. There goes Lorenzo Rota. It's gonna be a mass sprint in the streets of Villafranca Tirena. But Juan Manuel Diaz has choked. Congratulations to him, he's left his, he's raised his hands and he's taken an L. For him get in, man. Mark even is there. Wowzers. Uh, Manuel Diaz got second. Yeah, that, that'll teach you a lesson to celebrate and not win. Could potentially become Frenchy. Uh, finale etapa de la episode uh, plus four for everybody. <laughs> that, that, that's the worst Italian accent I've ever seen. Uh, all Spanish, in any kind of accent, probably the worst one since like, fucking okay, what was her name? Oh shit, the ah, oh. what well, an actress in in How to Get Away with Murder who cannot pronounce the word Castillo because she kept on saying Castillo. Anyway, I'm rambling. We've got a few breakaways. I'm gonna send someone in the breakaway today. I'm gonna send Simone Petit the last time we've had a mountain stage. The breakaway nearly won, and I am not about to have uh the same mistake again. So Petit goes in the breaks, uh, and if we win, we win. We managed to reach the breakaway, uh, not without uh, difficulties, but it's a strong breakaway. Yet again, we find Tanel Kangat and Juan Manuel Diaz, uh, just like the previous stage. We'll see if uh, this time the Spaniard raises hands yet again, but maybe this time he doesn't lose. I don't, I don't know, maybe that's, a, that's an odd concept for uh, a rider of Gazprom, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but they're going for the mountain jersey. I'm not clearly. That's not something I've, I've put my sights on, unless Dominico has like an absolute abysmal day at one point, and any GC hopes is gone. Uh, I'm going to focus solely on the stage today with Petit. Six minutes and 100k to go. And the breakaway is going to start uh, Valico di Montescuro, 21 kilometers, uh, 21 savage kilometers, should I say, with an average of 6.3. Uh, now, I reckon I'm not the strongest rider in the breakaway. And, well, I mean, something that isn't really a, a secret for anyone, but I'm not the smartest either. We do have seven minutes on the peloton, so I reckon we should potentially be safe of a, of a potential break. We should potentially be safe of a potential comeback. Yeah, nice one, Guillaume. But yeah, we should potentially be safe of a comeback from the peloton. We'll see if, if uh, that's true. We saw on Vietnam, despite having four minutes, Marta Tuzelt did lose. Hopefully, Simon and Petit will not do what the Dutchman did. Uh, and I would be taking an L. Oh, we've seen the first few moves up front. Um, we're going to come back at them. 
Lorenz Hunz and, and uh, Domenico did lose basically all of their teammates. My positioning with Domenico was absolutely horrendous to watch. Um, who, who's this? Oh, Miguel Lopez is gone. Oh, that's, that's new. Didn't know that. Uh, that's from Teo Gugenhardt. Why? Why is no one like UAE? Do you do you care about like your jersey or not? Because because right now it it seems like you don't. David Villela is gone up front. Uh, he's got three kilometers until the summit. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna try and play this smart. Uh, again, not my uh, not my forte, but we're gonna drop it to uh to help Dominico Pozzoviva because everyone in this group is knackered, including Joao Almeida. Oh, that's that that could be huge here. Yeah. That there now that that's a big one. Midas drops. We're gonna drop Hugh Carthy. We're gonna drop George Bennett. We've dropped Bahrain. We've dropped Joao Almeida. We're gonna come back on uh Diaz and Nance Peters. We just need to potentially come back on a uh, Villela and uh, Miguel Lopez. Okay, that's a very interesting stage. It's not how I thought this would go. I'm not gonna lie to you. Did not see that coming. Lopez is gonna take the stage and the GC by the same occasion. We're gonna try and uh, well, I mean, we're the second best rider so far, right? Yeah, we're not doing too bad. We're not doing too badly here. Roglic isn't moving. Like Roglic isn't doing anything to try and come back at us. That's like the the the, the most interesting part here is that like he's literally getting himself dropped. Giganot is the one trying to chase. Uh, we've attacked with Dominico in the in a downhill, trying to maybe get a few few seconds. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes for us. But yeah, like look at Roglic has been dropped by Giganot. Lopez takes the win ahead of Villela. Pozzo in P three. Very strong performance by Pozzo Ivo. Gaganot doesn't jump Kangat, Roglic, Diaz Petit. I mean, we're, yeah, we're, we're the second best rider on this Euro this year. I did not expect that at all. I can't be, I mean, I, I'm going to be very upfront with you here. After one week of racing, the general classification of the Giro is as follows. Miguel Lopez leads 1 minute 31 over Joao Almeida, the uh, big loser of today. 138 down is Domenico Pozzo, then 229 we'll find Primoz Roglic, and then 253 for David Godu. Alright, we're done with the Giro, now let's take a look at what happened on the 5 Jours de Dunkerque. And we start uh, with the first stage of Les 4 Jours de Dunkerque, not the 5 days of Dunkerque, I don't know what I'm on about. Um, strong lineup that we decided to bring. Uh, Adrien Petit and Andreas Christoph being my two competitors for the sprint. Sven Erik Bistrom or Loïc Vliegen for the GC. And stage one is going to go absolutely swimmingly despite the presence of Wout van Aert. Uh, we're going to come home with not only the win but also a 1 2. Adrien Petit takes the first win ahead of Alexander Christoph as we headed then to stage two. Uh, a bit of a different day despite a plus four on the plan card and a plus two on Christoph. I was looking quite confident and the sprint will be led near perfection. I'm just going to make a very small mistake. Um, I believe I'm going to go into times two there instead of uh, just putting pause, which means that I'm going to launch Christoph about five milliseconds too late. Too late uh, to get the win as Anton Turgis gets it for stage two. Stage 3, it is yet another sprint. Uh, once again, we're going to lead out the team quite nicely. Uh, we actually have the advantage on every one here. Plancart versus Christophe. Uh, sorry, Plancart, Christophe have launched way too early. And Wout van Aert, who had started a sprint about 2 kilometers ago, gets the win ahead of Nasser and Christophe. Disappointing, considering that van Aert now has 10 seconds of a lead as we headed for the stage of the Mont Cassel. Now, I know for, by, by fact, or I know for a fact, sorry, that this stage is often won by the breakaway. Uh, the breakaway never got that much of a lead, never more than three and a half minutes. Uh, I did try to never take a single relay with Bistrom as Adrien Petit crashed in the final couple of corners. Um, but we've started the final Montcassel with a gap of around 2.30 on the peloton. Guillaume Boivin, Bistrom, Dries de Bont, Daniel Os and Laurent Robit were the competitors and Guillaume Boivin will destroy us. But sadly he's going to destroy himself in the same process and sven Eric Bistrom will not only take the stage win but also the lead of the general classification of the uh, Cajor de Dunkerque with a very, very nice win. Um, I believe that the peloton will come on two minutes later and Loïc Vliegen will take a P10 position. 
Now I got surprised because I thought that there would only be one stage of the Castle. It turns out I was wrong. There was two of them. This time we sent Loïc Vliegen in the breakaway. He did a solo run that would last uh, up until the final sector of the Castle. Bistrom in very good position, held by Quinton Ammons. Everything is looking like we may try to challenge for the win uh, with Sven or even with Loïc Vliegen. He's, you never know. There's 500 meters left. He's, final, he's done the final sector. But we're going to launch slightly too early with Bestrom, and mainly we're going to make a huge, huge mistake because at this point I think I'm going to win and I make a crucial L in stopping Bestrom for a second. I, I, I pressed Z instead of A, I stopped everyone and uh, we lost. But despite uh, this disappointing result on the Montcassel and on stage 5, we're going to head in the streets of Dunkerque with the leading jersey on our shoulders. Loïc Vliegen launches Adrien Petit. Christophe is in the wheel, but with the minus one, I wasn't sure I would do well, and I mean, uh, I, I was correct, because it is going to be yet another win for Wout van Aert on the uh, Casual Dunkerque. Two stages for him, but the GC for sven Rick Bistrom. I mean, is this my most successful episode so far? Because we've had seven, tw we've had 12 stages in this episode. We've won the Saint-Jean-Dunkerque. We've won two stages on those races, and we've won twice on the Giro, and we got a podium on like four stages. And we're P3 of the GC. It's going to keep us in P3 of the World Tour rankings, and with that, it is time to wrap up a very good episode for us. Next episode, we will carry on with the Giro and the dossiers, so I hope you guys will be uh, eager to watch them. Um, we'll have no mountain stages in the next episode, uh, but a few hilly stages, so potentially a chance for Lorenzo Rota and Pascualon and De Rent and Van der Horn and Porto Vivo to win. Because right now it seems like I'm the best team in this world. But that will be for the next episode of the Intermarché Wanty Gobert Career Mode. I truly hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, then please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of my content in the coming days or weeks, whether it is Intermarché or other content related to PCM, then do feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the phone, get your phone.